Okay, moving on to Europe. Um, this is what happens when you don't share your presentations before an event. So about five minutes of my speech has got cut off. Um, one very interesting thing, although Asia does have 20,000 uh, hot spring establishments, 17,000 of these are in Japan. So if you take away Japan, Europe really is the major player globally. Two points come across from this. The first is, if we want to be truly global in the future, I think we need a representat representative from Japan and China. And secondly, Africa is very interesting. It says there are only 35 established hot springs in Africa. I'm actually from Zambia. I know it doesn't look it, but I am. And um, in Zambia alone, we've got about 50 thermal springs, all unused. Uh, one I saw, a woman was washing her clothes in it, and I tried to explain to her, if this was in Europe, you would have hotels and spas, and she looked at me like I was crazy. So the potential in Africa in the future is phenomenal. All down the Rift Valley, there are hot thermal springs. So I think there's huge development there in the future. Um, that's just a quick chart. 85% uh, of the revenue from hot springs comes from these countries. Again, most of them are Europe. And 96% of the revenue comes from these 20 countries. Again, most of these are from Europe. Just switching to the history very quickly, although people have been using hot thermal springs for hundreds of years in Europe, the hot spring product that we know today has its roots in what was a 19th century revolution, much like we saw in America, exactly the same thing. And they believed then that hot water and cold water and a combination of both could cure all diseases ranging from consumption to even venereal diseases like syphilis. And this was supported by eminent people at the time, Florence Nightingale, Charles Darwin. And there's a wonderful film and book. Charles Darwin took his daughter, who was dying of tuberculosis, to have some of these treatments in a spa in England. And of course, they promptly killed her. Oh. But um, there's a wonderful book and film about that. And from that, he understood the development of the species that the, the fittest uh, only survive. In this case, the fittest was the tuberculosis bacteria. So, European thermal spas, what differentiates themselves from other spas internationally is this medical, very strong tradition of healing. In Europe, it's predominantly thermal water, and these little red dots mark where the thermal water is in Europe. And as you can see, there's a big red splodge over uh, Central and Eastern Europe. <clears throat> where there was not thermal water, they tried to use other natural resources. Mud, CO2 gas. I think there's a tour to a spa in Austria after your Global Wellness Summit where they went, there's a radon gas uh, cave. So any natural resource they try to use as a basis and as an, an attraction for their healing. This is taken off our website. This is my, uh, our company Danubius. This is our medical stay, which hasn't really changed very much from the stays of the 19th century. We don't claim to cure syphilis and consumption, but we focus more on mobility uh, diseases. So you're staying for two weeks, you're seeing the doctor, and you're having about three to four physiotherapy-based treatments a day. That will cost you anything from 100 euros a day to 200 euros a day. All your treatments, doctors, and accommodation. And there's quite a lot of skepticism in the West as to how this works. So just put very, very <laughs> simply, imagine old lady with arthritis. She's excited. She's going to the spa. And every day she's going in the hot thermal water. She's having her three to four treatments prescribed by the doctor. 
And they're basically physiotherapy-based treatments. Rehab, massage, physiotherapy, heat packs, and so on. Of course, if you have that for two to three weeks, you're going to be more flexible, more mobile, and in less pain. And we know it works because about 70% of our guests are repeat guests. They're coming every year or twice a year because they have six months afterwards uh, uh, less pain. Okay, thermal spas in Europe. This is a typical example of a old eastern block hot spring resort. At the bottom here, you have the old 19th century hydrotherapy spa. They built the spa over the thermal spring. Um, we've now renovated that to a five-star hotel. But this is where it's interesting. Here you have accommodation for about 3,400 guests, built in the socialism. And the way it would work, you would go to the doctor, you would say, doctor, I've got a bit of a bad back. Um, this would be on the national health. He would prescribe you three weeks in one of these locations. You might slip him a little tip or give him a present and get an even longer stay. And you would arrive with about 100 or 200 other people, and every day you would have your treatments. 100 of you at the same time having mud packs. 100 of you at the same time having physiotherapy. 100 of you at the same time having med medical massage, and so on. So like a big treatment factory. And it still works pretty much in the same way today. Here's another one in Slovakia, and these are dotted all across Eastern Europe, Poland, Slovakia, Romania, Serbia, Serbia, Hungary, and so on. And that gives you an idea. This is what we've done in Danubius. We've kept our medical stay. In our spa hotels, this is about 70 to 80% of the spa revenue, the traditional medical uh, cure. We've also incorporated wellness and well-being stays and wellness and beauty. The wellness and beauty and relaxation, that's proving popular. The healthy living, this is not so popular, interestingly enough. My theory is most people can get healthy living wellness products where they live. <coughs> they don't need to travel. So we need to find a way to improve on this in the future. But still, the medical stay is staying strong. This is one in Poland. They've refurbished their old socialist accommodation uh, very basically. It's a thermal spa. You can stay there, have your three to four treatments a day, food, board, 50 euros a night per person. And they are stealing a lot of our guests. And their rehabilitation, it's not delivered in a luxury style, but it's really high quality and they're using a lot of uh, sophisticated equipment. And I went to see a supplier in Germany recently about that. Uh, Western Europe, slightly different. The municipalities tended to build the hot spring spas. And then what would happen is hotels, would, private hotels would attach themselves onto the municipality spa by a corridor. Here's another example. This is one in Austria. Here you can see the massive hot spring complex run by the municipality. They have wellness treatments, some medical treatments, and here are all the different hotels around it. Then what the hotels found is their guests didn't necessarily want to go to the municipality spa full of all the people and children. So they built their own spas in the hotels as well. So you have these massive spa and wellness complexes in Western Europe. This is interesting. This is really re relevant to Hungary. Public day spas, more leisure facilities for relaxation. They do have small medical clinics attached for the national health uh, patients. Uh, these are the oldest built in the uh, Ottoman Empire in the 16th century. And then in the 19th century, when they learned how to drill up uh, thermal water from under the ground, they expanded. And here's perhaps the most famous, I think, Mark, you were there. You looked around, it looks, this is the most impressive bath. 21 indoor and outdoor hot spring pools. With a medical center, with some wellness treatments, but really the people are going there for relaxation. Where is that? 
It's called the Sacheni Bath, and it's in Budapest. It's one of the biggest in Budapest. So if you go to Budapest, definitely worth trying one of these and one of the old uh, Turkish baths as well. We also have these. We are in a lot of these were also built in the socialism when people couldn't access the sea so easily. Their thermal bath complexes only open in the summer months. And as you can see, they're absolutely massive, just for leisure, for people to go and spend a sunny day in the summer and lie in the hot thermal water. And that's another one in the south of Hungary. You can see absolutely massive. And uh, some of these have also been converted into aqua parks and uh, added ho private hotels onto them and so on. And finally, we have a, lo a lot of these. This is one I saw in Romania about three weeks ago. Um, that's the old castle, which was a hotel. And then in the socialism, they built a thermal bath next to it. And they're looking for an investor, um, I think fairly urgently. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of these are, are dotted around um, uh, uh, <coughs> Eastern Europe. So in terms of trends, um, very interesting. When I came 15 years ago, basically you had the old German senior guests traveling from Germany and leisure guests. Now we've got seniors that are coming for medical treatment, but we've also got seniors coming for um, more active programs and leisure as well. We have um, what I call the wellness weekenders, they're not coming for health. They're coming to lie in hot water, go in a sauna, and then binge eat in the buffet afterwards. Um, families, this is just a small picture of one of our spas where we actually put in a, a kid's thermal bath um, because a lot of families like going to um, uh, thermal spa hotels uh, for leisure weekends or, or weeks in the summer. And then the markets become much more interesting. As I said, 15 years ago, it was mainly German-speaking guests coming to us. Now we have many more domestic guests, many more guests from neighboring countries as the economies go up. These are mainly leisure guests. A lot of Russian guests, they've declined a little uh, since they've had their crisis. They're coming mainly for the medical treatments, but they also buy all the other treatments as well and a lot of guests from the Gulf countries, Saudi Arabia, um, uh, Qatar, um, Jordan, the Middle East, Egypt, Israel, they're coming for the medical treatment. Somehow they really buy into that. Um, the products becoming more diversified as well. Water areas are becoming bigger and bigger and more exciting. Um, Saunas, when I first started, were little dark boxes with a window in. Now they're becoming much bigger, uh, with views, uh, different types of temperatures, much more variety. There's a new massage every month we're bringing in. The latest one I saw was the, we're not bringing it in, but the eel massage, where you lie in a box full of eels. <laughs> um, but they, 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 they will do anything. It, uh, I lose track of what's new. The medical treatment methods are becoming much more sophisticated in when i went to this spa in poland what what impressed me so much was not just the price but the equipment now they're using for rehab is fantastic and i went to see this company called proxomed in frankfurt where they just do it's like fitness equipment just for the back but it's all on a computer and it monitors your tempo and your strength absolutely amazing and interestingly enough detox programs have always been part of the uh, European spa culture um, they still are and then they're maintaining their niche and also as you know there's a huge um, diabetes obesity epidemic particularly from the Gulf countries and the weight loss programs are also holding their own Challenges, we don't actually have too many challenges, I'm pleased to say. Uh, we would like some more clinical trials backing up the effectivity of thermal water. I think it's hydrogen sulfide which uh, increases pain tolerance 
and uh, CO2 gas, which is good for the circulation, there we have clinical trials. But all the other minerals need a, a lot more work if they are to be uh, taken seriously. Uh, as I mentioned before, giving reasons for people to visit, not just for wealth, not just for relaxation and um, eating a lot in the buffet, and not just for medical, but actually coming truly for improving their well-being. How we can improve on that, I think we've got a challenge. And there is an oversupply of hot springs offering very much a similar product. So we need to find a way to diversify. Finally, opportunities, really positive. A massive uh, uh, aging population uh, demographic in Europe. 95 million retired people now in the European Union. That's going to jump up to 135 million by the year 2050. In Germany alone, by, by the year 2050, you're going to have 7 million more people. So uh, there's a big market for us there. They're more health focused. They're looking not just for medications, but for natural treatments, such as the treatments we offer. And if any of you have cash to spare and want to add another spa to the market, we've got a lot of very run down old spas like the one you can see in the picture looking for investors. Thank you very much. That's it.